Welcome to Hangar Talk, a video series of flying tips, comments, and anecdotes that promote airmanship, the artistry of flying with stick and rudder. I'm glad you joined me in this special video series on airmanship and aerodynamics. The series is not step-by-step -step instruction about how to fly an airplane. That's what I call monkey flying. Instead, I invite you to ponder your understanding of using the flight controls. Be thoughtful about your habits. Be honest about your ability to use stick and rudder. I believe a pilot's effective use of flight controls is a good definition of airmanship. Specifically, I define good airmanship as using the flight controls correctly to direct an airplane through a plethora of maneuvers throughout the entire flight envelope. The key word is correctly. Modern aircraft are incredibly forgiving of improper use of flight controls, and contemporary pilots are trained to fly well within the limits of the flight envelope. Consequently, Pilots are generally unaware of their improper use of flight controls to fly specific maneuvers. For example, pilots routinely use the yoke to steer. Watch airplanes on short final at your local airport. You will see many airplanes rocking the wings left and right and left again as pilots steer the airplane along the glide path. In this simple and most basic maneuver, wings level flight, too many pilots have learned that rocking and rolling is how you steer an airplane. This example, along with other common improper uses of flight controls, is evidence that misuse of flight controls is clearly rooted in basic flight training, how pilot school teaches us to fly. In the context of using the flight controls, I would like to share with you a fun experience it made me ponder my airmanship and use of the flight controls. It happened during a stall spin lesson with a student. I set up a spin scenario and got the expected results, a spin. I instructed the student, your airplane. He took the controls and made a successful recovery. However, it was not the spin I had expected. My control inputs had the intention to command an upright spin, but in fact, the airplane was spinning inverted. Of course, the student wasn't aware of that, and it made no difference to his recovery, but I was puzzled as how a positive attitude came to be negative. After the lesson, I reflected on that maneuver with my partner, a great stick, a former fighter pilot. A pilot from an adjacent hangar was also present. He was another great stick, and in fact, a renowned test pilot. As I described the maneuver and expressed that I was perplexed as to what actually happened, they, they both developed big grins, and at the same time they said, post-departure gyration. Say what? I was sure they were messing with me. Post-departure gyration is what happens when an airplane departs its flight envelope. The gyration is unpredictable and does not necessarily repeat itself when tried again. Apparently, test pilots get paid to discover these gyrations, and legend suggests a fighter pilot might use such a thing in a dogfight. If an adversary is on your six, it's fairly certain he cannot follow your airplane through a post-departure gyration. Thankfully, the post-departure gyration is not a maneuver you would expect to find in a flight school syllabus. If you actually think about maneuvers in pilot training, you realize flight schools actually minimize maneuvers as part of pilot training. For example, the current trend for student pilot training to omit actual stall recovery in steep turns. For the many pilots that learned to fly back in the day, the idea that students should not be trained to actually recover stalls 
and execute 60 degree bank turns is ludicrous. Instead of promoting airmanship, the skill of maneuvering an airplane, it appears contemporary flight training is limiting a pilot's ability to maneuver. Accident statistics suggest the FAA can do a better job of teaching pilots how to fly. Loss of control during maneuvering continues to be a leading cause of GA fatalities. Many working flight instructors also give testament to the proposition that pilots struggle with maneuvers. Biannual pilot flight reviews expose the truth that many pilots have difficulty performing basic flight maneuvers to a high or even marginal standards. Leaders and pundits in aviation education insist more training is a solution. Is it possible that more training is not the solution? If you do not change the way you do something, you repeatedly get the same results. More training is not a solution if that training remains rooted in misguided or incorrect understanding of flying fundamentals. It seems apparent to me that at least one fundamental missing from pilot training curriculum is the proper use of flight controls. When pilots practice poor technique, they become very good at flying badly. Pilots have difficulty performing maneuvers because of bad habits relating to the use of flight controls. Poor airmanship and habits that encourage improper use of flight controls develop from a few general considerations. Misunderstanding about or incorrectly taught principle. For example, many pilots carry extra airspeed to prevent a stall. Confusion about the meaning of a word. A great example, what does the word coordinate mean in context of using the rudder? Monkey flying may be my favorite subject. During flight training, instructors demonstrate and students memorize flight control inputs. That format promotes muscle memory to achieve performance instead of understanding the fundamentals about using flight controls. Failure to appreciate and conform to the principles of physics and aerodynamics. When you attempt to violate the laws of physics, your experience will have a bad outcome. Good airmanship and good habits derive from a pilot's understanding and adherence to the principles of aerodynamics. From a pilot's perspective, Flight training about aerodynamics should include understanding the science of flight and how the flight controls define the airplane's motion. Pilot training should emphasize using correct control inputs to maneuver an airplane within its design capabilities. In part two of this three-part series, I will speak to using the flight controls that discussion will prepare you to learn a most important and perhaps the least understood principle of airmanship. Unload before you roll.